Hello and good evening and welcome to another Everyday Living with myself, Simone Kennedy Harding and Dave. Hi Simone. You... <laughs> How are you? I'm all right. How are you? Yeah, great, thank you. And yeah. uh, we've got a great show tonight, haven't we? We've got a great show and you're, you're, we've swapped seats yeah. this week. And when Dave actually swaps seats like this, he gets quite excited reading the emails out yeah. because he can just read emails and just be, you know, and then... I'm in charge, so I've got to kind of rein him in, as you, as, you, yeah, yeah. as you can tell. So we're really glad to, to have you with us again um, for another week. And we're going to be talking, following on from our programme last week, about patiently waiting on the Lord. Yeah. That was a really good week last week, yeah, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. You... They're not surprised. We have no. a good show every now and then. No, we, no <laughs> we, we do have a good show every week. We love you. But we, I feel like we had a really, yeah. really engaged, yeah, an yeah. extra engaged response. You know what you it know? was? Last week, we said to everybody, don't email in towards the end of the show. Email in early. That's and true. they did. Yeah. And so That's we'll true. ask you again to email in as soon as you can. Yeah. It'd be great to hear from you. We're talking about disappointment tonight, aren't we? Yeah. We're so. talking about dealing with disappointment. And I think... I think we've had a bit of a thread, a thread to our to mm. our program, you know, the way that things have sort of travelled through, and so we've yeah we've talked about, you know, our emotional health, and then waiting patiently, and now we're talking about disappointments. You know, because sometimes we wait patiently, and of course the Lord answers, and sometimes it's not always in the way that we expect, and that right. does lead to disappointments. It's like, you know, what what can we do about that? So this is what we're talking about tonight is dealing with disappointments. How have you dealt with disappointments in your life? How have you um, dealt with disappointments if you felt that way about the Lord, about other people, within yourself? We really want to hear your stories tonight and what you might share with us. And we've got some good clips and good, some really good things to talk about. There. I think the key for me, we were talking about waiting on the Lord last week, and in that, uh, and we talked about waiting on the promise of God, but there are times when things that we want to see happen doesn't matter how long you wait don't happen and God does sometimes in his wisdom say no and I think that causes major disappointment because we from our perspective will say well Lord obviously it's your will that, this that my brother or sister gets healed mm. it's obviously God's will but it how many times Simone, have we prayed for people and I'm not trying to bring things down I'm trying to mm. be real tonight uh, you know, we prayed, we read scriptures out, we stood mm. and we waited upon the Lord and the healing hasn't happened. I know you've got friends even the last few years that we've lost because of yeah. uh, in those situations. And I think we set ourselves up for disappointment when we think that God is just going to do everything we, the way we want him to do yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I believe in healing. I believe in the miraculous. You know yeah. that. I believe in yeah. the moving of the Holy Spirit. But there are times when... I prayed and I haven't seen what I wanted and I had to come back. I've been disappointed, but I've had to come back and say, Lord, you know better. And I, does it make it any easier? No. Will it make it any easier next time? Probably not. But mm -hmm. that for me is one of the hardest things about, yeah. and that's where I feel disappointed. Yeah, but, but I think that's a, I think that's a good thing. Let us know, you know, in what Dave just said. Do you, does that resonate with you? What do you think about that? I, I, I agree. I think that we, we can fix our mind. Mm on a certain way that we think God is going to answer us or what he's going to do. And so, um, you know, God may have promised us something yeah. and we, we've determined the outcome yeah. of what that's going to look like. So then that leaves us open to disappointment instead of, okay, Lord, what is it, whatever it is that you want to do, yeah. you know, us being open. So I think that we have to think about, you know, where we're actually putting our, our trust and our faith um, yeah, it's just such it's like a... When your wife or your partner gives you, uh, or your girlfriend, boyfriend gives you a Christmas present and you're expecting it to be something yeah. and it's not what you're expecting it to be and yeah. you've still got to smile yeah. anyway. It's like, I've actually learned how to do this. You know, when you get socks for Christmas and you have to... <laughs> that's lovely, that's really... I've, oh, and I, love, I love the fact that it's got cartoon characters yeah. on it, you know? Uh, and, so, uh... and so it's that kind of... This, but you know you worked it up in your head what you think it's going to be yeah, and it isn't yeah. what it is going to be. So yeah. uh, I'm, I'm making light of it, but yeah. all of a sudden done, there are times when, you know, God <laughs> knows more than us yeah. and he just says no sometimes. 
<laughs> exactly. And I think, yeah, so I think it is a mixture of those things. God says no, but I think it's also the way yeah. that we thought God was going to answer. Yeah. It's like, oh, you said yes, but I didn't know the yes was going to look, like, look like that. Yeah, <laughs> or be like that. Like, oh, OK. And like you said, I mean, I think that's a really great analogy about the about the present. So I think that it teaches us it's not that we shouldn't have a good expectation, yeah. but unless it's been communicated to you that you're definitely getting, you know, I don't know, some Paco Rabanne yeah. aftershave. Well, I'll get it, I'll buy it from you. Yeah, yeah uh. that's true. <laughs> Thank you for that plug. Um, yeah, but um, unless, you're, unless you've been told that's what you're gonna get, mm. you've just, you've made an assumption and built something yeah. on that, and that's how we get disappointed, isn't it? And, and I think that's what happens to us, that we, we make assumptions, mm. we do a lot of assuming, and then we get offended. Yeah. And I think that's how we get offended a lot with, with other people and yeah. stuff that, you know, we've, we've made all these assumptions, no one else knows about it, and then when it doesn't happen, we can be upset and be cross. My mum said to me one year, I bought you, do you like Calvin Klein? I went, yeah. I bought you some, a Calvin Klein t-shirt, and when I open it, it's a Calvin Club on it. <laughs> so, so you can see that. <laughs> I spent my life in disappointment. I'm making fun of this a little bit, but uh, there's a light side of it, and yeah. this show's all about having a bit of fun as well. Yeah. But there's a there can be a, the other word that comes to mind tonight is despondency. Mm. We become despondent yeah. when we don't see what we believe we want to see the Lord do it in that certain way, and yeah. uh, quite often we we always say God's ways are higher than our ways. But when, when we don't recognise his ways compared to our ways, that's when we start to get disappointed. Yeah. So, yeah. We, again, it's about trust. Uh, but, you know, that's it's, it's one of those things that us preachers find really easy to preach, but really difficult to live. <laughs> so, yeah, no, yeah. it's so true. It's, it's, I think it's one of these, one of those words, one of these topics that I think we don't hear we that much. <laughs> yeah, and, and we don't hear that much about it. So I think um, it's not really a topic <clears throat> that often gets talked or preached yeah. about so it's like yeah how do i actually deal with that how do i cope with you know feeling disappointed with 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 the lord I, you know i shouldn't be and i i've struggled with that like oh god this is like did you not know this is going to happen and i know that you know because you know everything and it's that kind of struggle you know that that that, that we have yeah. and um actually this leads me quite nicely onto this particular it's clip. It's like we planned it. Because it's just <laughs> like we planned it. Um, but we didn't. Um, but yeah, that was nice. So we're, we're going to hear from a lady called Lisa. Um, I want to get her name right, so I'm going to look. Tur Turkist. I'm sure that's what her name is. And I like to get people's names right. So, And she's an amazing lady. And she's going to be talking to us about it's not supposed to be that way because, as we've said, we make assumptions and we think things are meant to be a certain way. But let us see what she's got to tell us on that. Disappointment. It's that feeling that circumstances should be better than they are. Relationships should be better than they are. Life should be better than it is. You know, it's like our expectations are here and then our experience is here. And the distance between those two is the fertile soil of disappointment where fear, disillusionments, and doubts about the goodness of God grow wild and fierce. Disappointment is a feeling we all have, but very few of us know how to process it, what to do about it, and most importantly, how to find God's goodness and wisdom in the midst of it. Disappointment comes in varying degrees of pain. Sometimes we struggle over small disappointments like, I don't know, like a crazy haircut or a missed opportunity. But other times, the disappointments are much more disillusioning and sometimes even devastating. A friend that suddenly goes silent a child that starts to make decisions so opposite from the way you raise them, a job loss without any new possibilities on the horizon, a betrayal from someone you thought was completely trustworthy, financial debt that feels inescapable, a terrifying medical diagnosis, or the sudden death of someone you love so much you don't know how you'll go on without them. The list of disappointments, big and small, well, they're endless, and we've all experienced our fair share of things not turning out the way that we thought they would. So what do we do about it? How do we live the joyful and abundant Christian life when we're so afraid of the next unexpected hardship and heartbreak? And 
Why would our loving God allow all of this hurt? These are questions I've certainly wrestled with personally in intense ways. I've suffered some of the most devastating heartbreaks of my life right here at this kitchen table on the couch that you see behind me and just in my home. So that's why I'm recording all of these sessions where I do life. You know, the past three years of my life, they've been more painful and soul rattling than any other season I have ever walked through. You know, when I wrote my last book, Uninvited, I did so thinking that I had experienced so much healing from past rejections that I could really help others. Well, I had no idea I would release that book in the midst of the most devastating rejection I'd ever face in my own marriage. Combined with several health challenges, which I'll tell you more about in the coming weeks, and you know that this study, it's not supposed to be this way. It isn't just a book I wrote. It's a message I've walked through, sometimes crawled through, but I survived, and you will too. While your circumstances may be different than mine, please know I understand pain is relative. Pain is pain. And in the context of your life, anything causing you hurt, it's worth being addressed. That disappointment that you're walking through, big or small, that ache in your heart, that seemingly never ending struggle that you don't know how to make better, well, you finally found a safe place to process these things. And better yet, throughout these next six sessions, you'll find healing perspectives to not only help you understand where disappointment comes from, but what to do so it doesn't keep stealing your joy and your peace today. This is an in-depth Bible study where I will uncomplicate crucial Bible truths that will help all of us know what to do in the midst of our own hard and disappointing circumstances. But before we jump into lesson one, I wanna cast a foundational perspective shift that I will build on through our time together. You know, I really love what she had to say. And, you know, she's she's got a series that she's got going on that, that, yeah. that you know, you can investigate on YouTube and et cetera. But I think, you know, she's talking about her own personal perspective and what she's gone through. And I think that's really, really important because like what you said, you, you know, you, you kind of said it in jest about preachers are good at preaching it, but then mm. living it is a different thing. Yeah. And you know, obviously she's talking about out of her experience and you were saying something as we were watching that. Which yeah, I was really just thinking good. the word disappoint, disappointed. It's like, it's something that we feel. It's almost like, you know, I go to doctors, my appointment's not there anymore. So that expectation, so I'm disappointed. And so maybe that's one way of looking at it, that our expectations are not met. And she was talking about the kind of our expectations being there, but reality being here. We live in a world, don't we, where social media is ruling and what we watch on Netflix and so on, all these people, and they seem to have these great lives like wives of Beverly Hills or whatever, <laughs> or, the, or the footballers' wives of Cheshire or something. Yeah. And it all seems to be that they live this great life. And, uh, and even looking at that woman on the screen with her house, she's talking about disappointment, I thought she's got a lovely house in the background. <laughs> what nice furniture she's yeah. got. Uh, and I'm thinking, yeah. you know, but, you know, uh, we can start comparing ourselves to other yeah. people, and that's when we can be disappointed as well. Yeah. So uh, quite often, God wants us to look to him yeah. and, and spend time with him. And I've got a word that I've got in my heart, but I'm mm. going to share it a little bit later yeah. um, because sure. I think we're going to go to our, our guest. But uh, do email in um, if you've got any disappointments that you've been working through, and maybe you're still working through, and maybe, maybe it's a thorn in the flesh. Paul had that. And maybe it's something that's going to be with you for life even. Uh, you know, how do you deal with a disappointment that's going to be there for the rest of your life? Uh, and that's where the, you know, uh, I'll say this because I really feel this yeah, is right. Come on. Paul, Paul said three times, Lord, mm. I've asked you to take this away from me. Three times. Now, how many times have you asked God to deal with something in your life and it hasn't happened yet? Mm. And Paul is like that. He's like us. He's human. Three times, Lord, I've asked you to take this away from this thorn in the flesh. Are three occasions and you've said no yet but your grace is, is sufficient yeah. for me and so you may be asking for something to go we've got a friend who's got um an illness that we've been praying for to go we've been standing on the word to go and it hasn't gone yet yeah and that 
that when I preached that word, I preached it a few months ago about his grace being sufficient for us. Mm. It really is the case. You know, sometimes we have to live with our disappointments, but God's grace is bigger than our yeah. disappointments. Amen. And so, uh, ooh. Ooh, anyway. Amen. Well, I, I, I'm, I hope that you got something out of that because I know for me that spoke to me, Dave, anyway. Good. Yeah, yeah I, I think it's, you know, and we go, I think we go through seasons as well. And yeah, we go through, like anything in life, we go through seasons. Yeah. I think it's hard if, it is a, if it's a longer or prolonged season of disappointment. But this is why we, you know, the Bible says, hope deferred makes the heart yeah. sick. And that's why, you know, we, we, we thank God for hope and, and for faith and to, to believe that we're going to move through. And, okay, we've got a, a guest on tonight. So we can discuss this a little bit further and, and get a, another angle and um, perspective from her and we've got the lovely Elaine Griffiths yay hi Elaine yeah hi. welcome welcome to the program and Elaine and I have known each other for about 20 odd years oh, don't give it away the age no. well you know we're <laughs> not ashamed oh, longer than that <laughs> was it gosh yeah about yeah 25 maybe 25 26 years could be in the 30s even. Wow. Oh. <laughs> you both, you I well, I tell you what, yeah, yeah. come on now. You wear it well. Come on. <laughs> but um, And we've reconnected recently through through lockdown. So I'm, I'm so, so, I don't always like to say the word lockdown because that gets yeah. used all the time. Unprecedented times. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but we've reconnected during this time and it's, been, it's just been so nice. And, um, and you're a qualified counsellor. And I am now, yes. Yes, and you're an integrative counsellor, which is really interesting. Can you just tell us, I know that's not about, that's not what the programme's about tonight, but I think that that's a new word for me and maybe it's a new word for our viewers. <laughs> so would you share a little bit about that and your self? Yeah. Okay, so um, in counselling, there are many approaches um, and a lot of counsellors, they may be just trained in one approach, which is, maybe most of them person-centered approach um whereas i'm more than one you know person-centered psychoanalysis yes which yeah. means um that i may tap into the per person's unconscious mind and help them to bring about feelings that they may be experiencing throughout childhood um for those repressed emotions from childhood. Uh, then you've got gestalt therapy, which um, helps the person to come into the here and now, into the present, oh. um, and deal with what's bothering them in the here and now. Oh. Um, CBT, that's one that we're most familiar with. You yeah, go to your GP and that. they may recommend a course of CBT, six yeah. sessions of CBT, um, cognitive behavioral therapy. Yeah. Um, so that deals with um, our nat negative automatic thoughts. So, you know, oh, just helping know. the person yeah. to reverse those and be more right. positive about themselves. And, you know, it, there, oh, there's it's... more, but I don't want to. No, you know. I, I, I love it. I <laughs> mean, just, uh, can I ask a question about yeah. the, uh, the nat uh, negative automatic, what was it? Response. Thoughts, thoughts oh. right. Is that something that, as we're talking about disappointment tonight, is that something that disappointment could be linked to as well, that we're automatically going towards yeah, feelings yeah, of disappointment? Yeah, yeah. Uh, how, yeah. how would that so, work then? So, you know, things will happen. You may experience a bereavement and you just sink straight into depression. Um, you could lose your job. Yeah. Um, so rather than looking at it positively, you look at it negatively. Right. Um, so you start thinking all these negative things about, you know, you know, I'm going to lose my home. Um, I'm going to lose my family. I'm going to lose everything. So you start thinking and you just yeah. get, you know, into that cycle of negative yeah. thought. Yeah. Like, so, yeah. I think it's interesting. You said that it's a cycle and, you know, even when you was expressing that, it, it it's like getting overwhelmed, isn't it? Of just all, yeah, these, yeah, all these sort yeah. of thoughts. And yeah. How do you, have you, have, you know, have you noticed, especially during, you know, this, this time of lockdown, I mean, yes, yeah, sorry, <laughs> I didn't want to say it, but, you know, here in, here in, you know, Spain, we, we, 
we've kind of come out of that. We're wearing our masks, but I know that in other countries and in even the UK, there's mm. some parts. So, you know, have, have you been dealing with any clients or speaking to any people about this sort of their expectations? Because I think, you know, we've we've with the other clip that we watched, you know, we were talking about the lady was talking about, you know, this this gap between sort of your expectation and 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 what is actually happening in reality and that's where disappointment can come in so what what would you say about that in helping people kind of yeah cope with their expectations and disappointment um so i think one of the major things during lockdown is um job loss um because a lot of people have lost uh their jobs and you know maybe on the verge of losing their homes and as a result that brings pressure on the family um, and it brings pressure on relationships whereby, you know, divorce rate is even higher and the domestic violence and, um, you know, just so much going on for people at the moment because of um, COVID-19. It's caused a lot of disruptions in, in our lives. Um, so it's just about self-care and just, you know, making sure that I know it can be difficult with, you know, not knowing where your next, you know, gonna where your next financial in is gonna come from. Where where's my next salary coming from? Um, and you've got children to feed, you've got bills to pay. Um, but there's ways around it by, you know, people have started businesses during lockdown and businesses are, are taking off. There's so many things that we can sort of tap into yeah. um, rather than sink into depression and think, oh, there's no way out. Yeah. We can sort of, you know, put pen to paper and try and come up with a plan. What can I do? There, there, there are ways around it. Right. Can I just ask um, how we get, how do you get the balance and how do you teach people the balance between kind of um, unrealistic expectations that will bring disappointment. For instance, you know, I'm going to lose three stone in the next two weeks. That's an unrealistic expectation for me. And I will be disappointed when it doesn't happen. So, and yet I do need to have, because I don't want to become like the cat that has its tail still on every time and expects it to happen. In other words, that uh, I'm just don't have any expectations at all. And suddenly you start spiraling into depression. So it's, it, there's a real balance to, to kind of, get there isn't there yeah i think it's about small steps um mm. i mean how do you eat an elephant you can't just gulp it down you have to um just small bites yeah. um you can't set yourself expectations that are so high that you can't achieve them um so i think just taking small steps uh yeah that's really I think that that because I think sometimes we can think that expectations are going to cause us to have disappointment. You know yeah, I mean? because yeah. We're, we're we're setting our expectations and we're going to set ourselves up for a fall. But if we don't have goals and expectations, then exactly. we're we're also going to be disappointed, really, yeah, ultimately. Yeah. And I, so. I think that's the thing. It, it is establishing that that balance because you know sometimes. We, we, we may not listen to what's really going on. So we set all these things up in our mind. And I think that's about communication as well. You know, it's like you can have expectations of friends and family. And it's like, where did, who said that that was going to happen? Yeah. And who, I mean, did anybody actually say that this was going to take place? Or is it just what you would planned in your mind? So when it doesn't happen, you know, that's how a lot of, yeah, people fall out with people, isn't it? And it's like, because there, there has been something that's been expected. Um, and it's it, it's not been made clear, but I think that that's really important what you've said, Elaine, as well about taking small steps. That, mm. you, and I think when we see that we take those small steps, whatever they are in whatever area, that actually helps to build, you know, confidence and yeah, and 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 faith, and actually to build hope. Yeah. Um, and part of disappointment is is not not having any hope so when our hope is is built up yeah. then it's like building blocks you know and um are there any you know before we before we move on are there any sort of tips that you could give to us so now you've given us a tip already in terms of taking small steps 
um, you know, if people are coming to see you and they are sort of saying, you know, that, they, that, they're, that they're struggling with depression and these things, um, is there anything else that you could sort of share that may just, um, may just sort of help? Um, so I wouldn't say to dwell on the disappointment. Um, so talk about it to others. Right. Um, we can share with our friends and our family members. Um, we can, I wouldn't say talk about it 24 seven because that can also cause depression, yeah. but talk about it and move on right. and um, identify what the cause is. What is the cause of um, my disappointment? Is it something um, that I failed at? Um, what can I learn from this experience? What can you learn from this experience? Um, many people see unmet expectations as failure, but it's necessarily failure. It's, you know, what, what's that saying? Fa success is failure turned inside out. Right. Um, so failure is just an opportunity to, to learn and to improve. And yeah. another question to ask yourself is what can I do about it? Um, it's good to have a brainstorming session with yourself and just put pen to paper, you know, what can I do about this? And look at different solutions, look at different options and set a plan, a plan in place. Um, I remember when I lost my job, I was made redundant and I was so fearful because I'm thinking, gosh, I'm going to lose my home. I'm not going to be able to keep up with my mortgage payment. And I was just really down, down in the dumps. And uh, this was at two years ago. And I just went job hunting. I went crazy. I was up all night on my computer looking for jobs. And I managed to gain a job that was paying me 10,000 pounds more than what I was getting before in my previous job. So that, it, that was like a blessing in disguise. Mm. God took me out of this job and gave me something even better than what I had before. Wow. So sometimes it's it's a blessing in disguise. Yeah. Um, God will turn things around for our good sometimes. Mm. Um, so not every disappointment is, you know, to... <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's so... That is so good. No, thank you for even sharing, you know, from your personal experience because... I think this this is this is what we want to do on all of the shows on Revelation TV. But on our show, it's just being real. Yeah. It's just being you know effective and 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 practical as well, and how God brings the two things together. But um, I, I like, think sorry, I like yeah. what she said about not dwelling on it all the time because yeah. quite often we, we start to kind of wallow in it, and uh, so mm -hmm. take yourself out of the situation every now and then, and uh, yeah, and I suppose being end up uh, having a pity party. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the problem yeah. with being in lockdown is that you really sometimes are not able to take your mind off it, and yeah. so you learn kind of coping mechanisms. I suppose yeah. would be yeah. right, but uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I've not been disappointed with this interview. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, it's been great. Uh, but I think that's I think yeah, just that that's really good when you when you've just talked about your you know, shared about yourself because that's a real life situation, is it? Mm. Like what we've spoken about people losing their jobs. And I and I think it is I think you know, where God will turn things around for our good, like what you said, and it's a blessing in disguise. So I think a lot of it is where our expectation is and um and so, you know, there's a scripture that talks about my expectation comes only from the Lord. It's in Psalms. I've forgotten which Psalm it is, but I know that, that Psalm has really helped me a lot in my walk with God that, okay, help me to keep my expectations on you, mm. not even having a particular outcome, but that my expectation is literally in the Lord. Like, okay, Lord, okay, if my focus on you, that somehow, you know, shifts my outlook and my mindset mm. you know um and it it takes off of dwelling on something so it's being realistic mm. yeah. that i feel yeah. this way or this is happening but i'm i'm now choosing to 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 kind of you know shift and to 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 refocus um and that obviously then makes a lot of difference you know to what we're mm. 
what we're going through. But, um, well, it's been lovely having you. We wish that we could stay longer, um, but we've got to move on with the show and maybe you'll Bye. come back and visit us again. Yes, that'd Thank be lovely. You. Thanks for having me. It was lovely. Yeah. Like, before you go, if anybody wants to get in touch with you, um, I mean, have you got a website or, or some sort of social media where maybe? Yeah, if they put in my name, <laughs> Elaine Griffith, it will come up the counselling directory and uh, all my details will be there, contact details, everything. Oh, lovely. And you're based in London, yeah? Yes. Okay. Lovely. Oh, lovely. So thank you so much again. And thanks um, for having me. Yeah. Stay safe. Yeah. Stay Take blessed. care. Thank you, my <laughs> Thank love. Thank you. Bye. Take care. See you, Elaine. Bye. Bless Bye. you. Bye. Well, that is the lovely Elaine. And yeah, if you need to, if you need to get in touch with her, then um, her details are on the screen, and you can just in investigate and have a have a look and find her. And we thank you for your time again, Elaine. We we hope that. You know, you're getting something out of this. We hope yeah. that something's resonating with you. Have we got any emails? Yep, yeah, we've got a few actually. Oh, so let's do a few. we'll go with these. Um, yeah. So, first of all, uh, this is from Eileen. And she says, uh, Want to thank Simone for her word on God morning yesterday. Oh. I must have missed it. I'll have oh. to look it up. Oh, thank you. By the way, if you miss any of the TV programmes, you can go onto the app, can't you? Onto the Revelation you TV app. Yeah. You can watch this programme as many times as you like. <laughs> 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 uh, right. And so. Uh, Thank you. She said, I was widowed in June this year. I was feeling a little low yesterday, oh. and your word just lifted my spirit. Whenever I clean my teeth, I will think about you. I don't know what that means. You must... Oh, well. No, I, no, don't. No, yeah, sorry. No. You have to watch it. Yeah, you got to uh, watch it. I'm 84 years young. Uh, oh. May God continue to bless your ministry along with Dave. Thank you, Eileen, for that. Oh, um, uh, well, I'm going to watch that one to find out what the toothbrush is about. <laughs> okay, uh, I was praying for a miracle of healing for my grandson who was three. He went to be with the Lord Jesus last month. Oh. It's hard to understand why God allowed his death to happen, but I know that with my grandson being so young that he is with Jesus, and so shall I be when I go to be with the Lord Jesus. My heart is broken, but I have to take one day at a time. God bless. That's from Glenda. Um, yeah, uh, this is something, you know, there is no, the, you know, what really annoys me in situations like this is that sometimes Christians can just give a glib yeah. answer that may have truth in it, but there's lack yeah. like the compassion in it. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> there is no answer. I don't know why God allows that to happen. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I trust him that one day we may know why that happens. Yeah. But I do know. Uh, and I have to believe, and I do hold on to this, that yeah. you will see your grandson again. Yeah. And he's in a place of complete healing. The Bible says in Revelation, a place where God says that he, there is no pain. And God himself, mm. can I just say this? God himself wipes away the tears from our eyes yeah. in, in yeah. heaven. Um, so, uh, yeah. Bless you. Uh, we've got a few more I'm here. Sorry for your loss. Uh, evening, Simone and Dave. It's lovely to see you both. I watched your God Day, Simone, and it was really inspiring. <laughs> I did write the poem last week. I've been writing poetry my whole life. I use it to express myself when I'm happy and sad. Disappointment can be difficult. My nan, mm. who we lost many years ago, was ill all her life, and she was the loveliest Christian lady that you could ever meet. Oh, uh, this is to, uh, to make everyone last, and uh, she's given us a poem here. Let me read this, oh, and I hope lovely. I'll do it justice for you. Get your poem voice out, <clears throat> Dave. Come on. I wanted a Ferrari. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I wanted a Ferrari. But it never did appear. I failed to win the lottery, and never will I fear. I don't live in a mansion or dine out at the Ritz. I may not have the best of health, but I, I will. <laughs> I will knit. Go to. Sorry, I, I've really ruined it. Sorry. Let me read it again. I may not have the best of health, but I will knit. Go to bits. For I have something better that money cannot buy. I have the Lord who loves me in heaven, way up high. Won't be disappointed. He gave me so much for me. I've learned to sing his praises. I know that's why. I know that's the key. I'm sorry. I'm rubbish at reading. I'm not Keats. You know what I mean. <laughs> to find to find in peace and happiness until my dying day. So I will find the bright side, and in his grace I'll stay. Mum and I find your show so uplifting. We love you both, Anita and Mary. Oh. We love thank you, Anita you. and Mary, as well. Yeah. Oh, and, bless uh, you. Yeah. Thank you for that poem. I've got four more emails here. Do excuse can I Dave, just, he did try. Can I just apologise because I think I was rushing on that and mm. and 
I will come back to that another day, okay? Yeah. Because I, I, I wasn't the best. Uh, but it was a beautiful poem. Uh, right, so this is from Rose Phipps. I do look forward to your show each week. One of the ways I deal with disappointment is to always remember a statement Charles Stanley made some time ago. He says, disappointment is inevitable. Discouragement is a choice. I like that. Mm -hmm. Good. So when, yeah, in other words, so when disappointment comes, mm -hmm. choose not to be discouraged because yes, disappointment yeah. will come. Yeah. So when disappointment comes, I always remind myself of that and it helps me to cope. God bless. Mm -hmm. Rose, that is awesome. Yeah, and Rose, great. you're going to get a mention in my sermon. Yes, come right. on, Rose, you made <laughs> right. it into the sermon. <laughs> you made it into the sermon. Congratulations, you are a winner. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, there is a scripture that says that the secret things belong to God. I do believe 100% that healing is provided for us as part of our redemptive work of Christ. Yeah, amen. Uh, Paul's form in the flesh was not a sickness, but was a messenger from Satan, and that God allowed so that Paul would not be puffed up yet to fall into pride uh, mm -hmm. because of the amount of revelation he received, hence the amount of persecution he suffered. Uh, we just have to keep trusting God, knowing that he causes all things to work together for our good. And that's absolutely right. And who's that from? That's from Les. Les. Uh, do you want me to do two more? Have we got time? Um, you could, well, you short could one. actually, yeah. go on, there's a short one. Uh, blessed is the one who perseveres on the trial because having stood the test, that person will receive a crown. And that's James 1 to 12. Oh, lovely. And one here. I, hi, Dave and Simone. I love your program and both of you. We'll send that check in the post. <laughs> um, I've lived all my life because of the lack of nurture in my childhood with crippling tension, anxiety and repressed emotions. Oh. That I've not been able to find any escape from. This was aggregated, uh, aggravated by the fact that doctors in the 60s didn't understand about developmental PTSD and hospitalised me, mm. diagnosed me with schizophrenia until had, I had to stop seeing them for the fear of being institutionalised for life. Oh, my gosh. Do you know, I don't take this lightly that we're able to come into your oh. room and speak to you, mm. these people, uh, who and, and know that God is speaking tonight to you after yeah. all these years yeah. uh, i repressed my emotions till i was in my 60s and even now it's tremendously difficult to get a doctor to understand oh i'm suffering from physical symptoms i'm 79 now and for the mm. first time a doctor decided to give me blood tests and they've shown very high levels of inflammation in my body wow i've been saying this for ages spoken to the lord and i'm still not healed i've asked him what i've done wrong who, I, who do I need to forgive, etc., etc. But this is a disappointment that lasted a lifetime. I'm tired of it. I expect the Lord is too. But he has shown me a lot of mercy. We'll be grateful for prayer because I don't know what to do next. Love and blessings from Margaret. Margaret, I would just encourage you uh, to keep praying uh, and keep trusting in God. Uh, and, you know, I, I made a decision over issues in some issues in my life that even... I'm going to keep praying, keep trusting. And even if God doesn't answer, the answer still is, I'm going to keep praying, I'm going to keep trusting. Yeah, yeah. And I know it's a resolution I've had to make. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, um, that's just really, I mean, all of you writing in and what you've shared is has been really great. And we just really value you, your interaction. And we're so glad that you you enjoy the show and being with us on a Thursday evening because we really enjoy being yeah. with you as well. Um but I think in that last email, you know, I can really feel your pain. And it is frustrating when we're not getting answers. And I actually went through a time um, in the last couple of years where I had inflammation in my body. And um, and so I would just encourage you to, to you know, keep, keep putting your foot down in terms of um, seeking, yeah. you know, medical help um, for the physical. But also as well, I really would encourage you to pursue um, your emotional health. We talked about emotional health a couple of weeks ago, yeah. you know. And so even like having um, like Elaine on the programme, you know, we that's often an area in our life that is neglected. So I would encourage you to even seek out um, counselling to because you've, you can, you've, the good thing is you've identified that there's some repressed emotions and things. And you'll be amazed that when those start to get released and God uses counseling as a tool a lot of your physical symptoms will can can ease up as well so i'd really just think yeah just encourage you to to get as, as much support 
in the different areas, spiritually, yeah. physically and emotionally. Somebody else has uh, messaged about your God Day. That's the third one oh, tonight. Oh, wow. Uh, thank you for your programme. Good to see you both, especially in the evening when living alone makes it more special. We're actually talking about uh, being on our own next week. Um, thank you for your talk on God Day, Simone. It was very encouraging. The visual aid, excellent for remembering to... I need to watch this, I think. You need to watch it. I need to go home yeah. tonight and watch God Day. I know it's the wrong time of the day to watch it, but I'm going to watch it anyway. Oh. Lord bless your ministries, Marion. Thank you, Marion. Oh, thank you so much, Marion, and everyone that's written in. As, that's really encouraged me, honestly. Yeah. Um, you needed that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to say that... Um, I, I, I've, you needed a bit of encouragement and God's brought it along. Yeah, right? yeah. absolutely. And I didn't expect... That it was going to be in this way. Yeah. So exactly, I'm actually yeah. really like surprised, um, you know. So I'm I'm just really thankful. Thank you, Lord. And we're actually going to go to our next clip, and this is with um, Pastor Stephen Furtick, and he's Furtick. Yeah. So <laughs> I practiced that a million times, and I got it wrong. Sorry. Thank you for Fertnick. correcting me. So nobody needs to write in and correct me because I've got oh, Dave dear, here. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, before this Don't goes... Don't correct me later. Yeah. Before this goes completely to pot, um, we've got him talking about the danger of disappointment. So let's find out what he's got to say. Too many times I let my disappointments destroy my faith. The invisible prison of disappointment keeps you from trying keeps you from giving, keeps you from risking, keeps you from praying, keeps you from believing, keeps you from hoping, keeps you from experiencing the presence of God because you don't expect the presence of God. And then you never experience the presence of God, so you never expect the presence of God. So you never experience the presence of God, so you never expect the presence of God. It's a cycle. We've got to break the cycle to believe that he's still the one. If I feel him or if I don't, he's still the one. If it happens or if it doesn't, he's still the one. If I rise or fall, he's still the one. And this message is for somebody you've been disappointed by life, but your disappointment is not a dead end. I declare it's an open door to greater things because whatever you had planned, there's something better God knows. Amen. So be it. He's still the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He's still the one who died for me. He's still a good father. He's still for me, not against me. He's still with me, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death. He's still the one. Disappointment is a dangerous, dangerous thing. It can cause you to set your expectation at the level of your experience and miss the purpose of God in your life. And it's real where we live, the invisible prison. It's real. It's real how we feel like we can't get outside of our, our frame of reference. It's real. But Jesus said, I came to set prisoners free. What if the place he wants to set you free the most is in the area of your expectation? What if he is doing in your life exactly what you asked him to do, but just not the way you want it? Maybe that's what faith is. Oh, wow. Yeah. Hallelujah. My hands were up just praising the Lord then. That is just so Has powerful. He's been listening to us. That's exactly what I, we said earlier. Yep, yeah, I think he's been listening that to us. God, we, we ask God to do something, and when he doesn't do it in the way we want him to, we get disappointed. Yeah. And yet, look at it and realize. And sometimes you can look back on your year, and let's face it, everybody's saying 2020 is a year that everybody wants to forget because of all the things that are going on and, and seems to be just bad news after bad mm -hmm. news happening. And uh, I think we'll look back on this year and say, you know what, I saw God in that. Yeah. I saw the Lord. It wasn't how yeah. I expected it to be, but I've seen the Lord. Yeah. I've seen God moving at this time. Yeah. That's so right. uh, I, really, I don't know what's going on. The, the word that was on my heart earlier, Simone, mm -hmm. I was going to share this, is that, I really felt that somebody, you've been rejected by somebody mm. and it's hurt mm. because somebody said, I don't want you anymore and they've yeah. pushed you. Mm. And I'm feeling maybe you, somebody watching today and you just felt like you've been pushed back. But as that person pushes back, God doesn't reject, God embraces and brings you in. And I was just reminded of the widow's oil and yeah. uh, where in that situation, uh, she lost uh, her husband and 
she thinks she's going to lose her sons. God doesn't bring back everything that doesn't bring her husband back. Yes. You know, he doesn't, he's not risen from the dead, but he does an amazing miracle. Thinking of Job, a lot of people say, well, it, it's a happy ending for Job because he gets threefold back more than mm. what he had before. Yeah. But his daughters are, do not come yeah. back. So, you know, there's no, there's not always a happy ending. It's not always, God will bless, but it's not always the way we always want it to be. And so Job, I'm sure, would have rather have had his daughters than a threefold blessing, you know, yeah. all the material yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so God, God does bless him and bring back stuff into his life, but he never gets back. And so I just wonder sometimes whether we just have to acknowledge, and for, I really felt this for somebody as well, that God says that he is a husband to the husbandless. And mm -hmm. so as you may have feel like that's a gap, God is bringing that place, God is filling that place where you've been rejected. It might not be uh, in a marriage situation, it might be something completely different, re rejected in a job situation. If you've been rejected in that, God embraces you and Amen. he fills that need and fills that gap in your life. Amen. And so I felt that was some way today. Ooh, amen. That's, he that's is a beautiful word. Amen. The person there, so. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this has been. You're receiving been, that as well. I, I'm definitely <laughs> receiving I'm like, no, it's all going to be now. Um, yeah, I think when he was just talking and even, you know, what you've just shared that, you know, God, God is the gap filler yeah. and, um, you know, he works, we hear that all the time, you know, the Lord works in mysterious ways. And I think sometimes, I mean, we, I know we'll do a show, I'm sure at some point on suffering, which is what yeah. nobody wants. Well, I'm going to mention like it in this next about. email, actually. Um, yeah, but I think it's the in the ways that he chooses to repay mm. or to, to bring repair it's not always in the way that we that we that we think but the most important thing is just keeping our eyes on yeah. the lord and it is and it ties in with waiting as well on the lord like we spoke about last week mm. because you know we can go off and do our own thing but how do we wait but we've got yeah. an email uh, james 5 verse 10 i'm not sure who emailed this it just says lw uh, james 5 verse 10 brethren take the prophets who spoke in the name of the lord as an example of suffering and patience now these are men of god women of god um but they suffered and they had to have patience indeed we count them blessed who endure you know because i think we we count blessing as right lord i'm ill god heals me straight away i'm yeah. blessed yes but god says then says here actually those who have actually said for healing and it hasn't happened yet for whatever reason uh and maybe all all the jobs gone, even though God has promised Sorry. promised some prosperity. Yeah. That actually we God counts that as being blessed. Which yeah. those who've endured are blessed. Uh, so you've heard the perseverance of Job and seen uh the end intended by the Lord, uh that the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. Amen. Uh one more email to go out here. Hi Simone and Dave. Simone, you are looking lovely with your hair down. Oh. Thank you. Yeah, actually, I just realised I don't normally have my hair down. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Thank, oh, you. Funny cause Thank you. Thank you. I don't know. No. Um, and and I said, and, and Dave, thanks for your lovely <laughs> smile. Because obviously, no mention of the hair. Yeah. So that's it. grass never grows on a busy road, Shireen. Um, and you don't, and you, right, okay, so thank you for your lovely smile, and you don't know how many people get inspired by this programme in the evening, including me. Keep smiling with the joy of the Lord, Shireen. Oh, yeah. thank you, Shireen. Yeah. And thank you for writing in. I think it was last week or the week yeah, yeah. before. So thank you so much. It's just, it's so nice um, just to know that you're all there yeah. and just watching and interacting. Now we've got one last clip for you that um, I just thought would just be a nice little treat just to round this off. And we've got Pastor Joyce Mayer. Oh, yeah. we love Pastor Joyce. I love Pastor Joyce. And she's talking about dealing with um, disappointment of unrealistic expectations. So she's just going to round off what we've been talking about. Talk about the disappointment of unrealistic expectations. Are we coming back after this? I want you to think about what that means because I tell everybody all the time to be full of hope, and that means to expect that God is going to do something great in your life. So I'm for dreaming, for big vision, expecting God to do the impossible. But we set ourselves up for disappointment 
when we are believing for things that not even the Bible tells us <laughs> is a reality. And I found 10, I'm sure there's a lot more, but I really think that many times, if you'll be really open and listen to this, that it's not really other people that make us unhappy, it's what we expect out of those people. Like I used to expect Dave to make me happy all the time. And after several years of that, God said, will you stop trying to give Dave the responsibility for your joy? Come on, maybe, some, maybe somebody here is doing that. You're, you're like, you're mad because somebody that you're in a relationship with is not keeping you happy, but maybe you need to take responsibility for your own joy and decide to be happy in the Lord. We have to take responsibility for our own stuff. So that took a big load off of Dave when I finally stopped depending on him. <laughs> Are some people, they expect other people to make them feel good about themselves all the time. And you know, that can just wear somebody out. I mean, when you constantly depend on them to keep you up and running and fixed and feeling okay about yourself, eventually you just wear people out. They don't even wanna be in a relationship with you anymore. So when you know who you are in Christ and you feel good about yourself, then you're, you're not putting that job off on somebody else and it makes relationships healthy and whole. Just a few opening comments here. We do not live life on the mountaintop. And facing that reality helps us to be prepared for real life. You see, even though I believe in having big dreams, we also have to be prepared for real life. We have times that we enjoy that are on the mountaintop of life, but we all know that we live most of life in the ordinary every day, right? And I was kind of thinking about this, and it's kind of interesting. You know, we, we want to be enthused all the time, and we want to be excited all the time, but I hear people say, and I feel like this, like after the Christmas and the New Year holidays, you've got a long time of things being different, and most people will say, I'll be so glad to get back to my regular routine. So really, we do like our normal everyday life. We need what I call the spice in life, the little extra things once in a while, the the birthday party, the new dress, the vacation. We need things like that to shake it up and make it different. But to be honest, most of life is just getting up and going to bed, getting up and going to bed, getting up and going to bed, going to work, cleaning the house, watching somebody get it dirty, cleaning it again. <laughs> going to church, going home, going to the grocery store, eating the food, cleaning up the mess, right? Most of every day is just, so I think it's a great game to play with the devil to just watch him try to make you unhappy and not let him. Uh, oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, it ties in with what, um, what you were saying about, was it Charles Stanley? Yeah. No, who was it? Somebody said it in the email. Yeah, yeah that, that's right. Yeah. yeah. About choosing to, you might be disappointed, but then choosing to not be discouraged. Yeah. And I, th I think that, you know, everything ties in together, yeah, doesn't it? it does. Is that yeah you know, that we're making, that we need to make choices. And we just want to, as we close tonight, we just want to just, you know, just hope that you've been encouraged through talking about disappointment, that we can identify these things, that there are ways that we can work through situations, that it's normal to feel disappointed. Yeah. That God is our encouragement and that our expectation comes from him. Let us keep our eyes on him. Let us keep being open and being real with how we feel and sharing that with someone that we're close to or that we feel we can speak to and to know that you're not alone to know that you are loved that we are all loved and that we go through these seasons and it's a normal part of life you know but we are victorious and god is god is emboldening us he's strengthening us he's everything that we need and so we look forward to seeing you again yep. next week See you soon. can't wait god lots bless. of love god bless Bye bye, bye.